This is a super short summary of the development assessment system in Queensland. So most government publications normally describe the development assessment system as starting with pre-publication meeting, uh, with, that is a, a meeting with government, or with the application part. But there are a number of key preliminary questions before you know whether you even need to apply, and if so, what parts are relevant. So those three preliminary questions are, is it development? What category of development is it? And what levels of government are involved in the application process? So there's a handout available on the website at the end of this uh, presentation. And in it, I suggest thinking of the, de the development assessment system in two big steps, these preliminary questions, and then the DA process in the sort of flowcharts that government publications describe the process as. So I'll work through those three preliminary questions using the handout. The first question is, does the proposal involve development? And that requires that you understand the definition of development in the Planning Act. So in Schedule 2 of the Planning Act, development is defined as carrying out building work, plumbing and drainage work, operational work, reconfiguring a lot, or making material change of use of premises. So you can follow the cross-references in the dictionary and you'll find that building work includes both building structures like a house as well as demolishing them. Plumbing and drainage work essentially means connecting the pipes that bring water into a premises or connecting the pipes that take away sewage from the premises. Operational work includes uh, common or common forms of operational work are vegetation clearing, uh, excavating or filling on land or roadworks. Reconfiguring a lot uh, means breaking up or changing the boundaries of or amalgamating any lot uh, of land. So like a parcel of land for a house, if uh, you wanted to merge it with several other parcels, you'd uh, say five houses have been bought and someone wanted to turn them into a hotel, then they might merge all those parcels together and build a hotel on it. So that's reconfiguration of a lot or reconfiguring a lot. The final category, making a material change of use of premises, is particularly important. It, a particular form of material change of use, or MCU, is the start of a new use. And the key term of use is, is poorly defined in the Act. It, it has a technical meaning. And on the back side of the handout, I've given you a summary of that technical meaning. And basically, a use of land is the purpose for which the land is used as understood in ordinary terminology and a town planning context. And often there's definitions of use uh, in relevant planning schemes uh, as well as uh, in the planning regulations. So use is a key term, but you're already familiar with it from general everyday experience. So common uses are a restaurant, a house, uh, a hotel, uh, a school, a hospital. A material change of use would occur if you wanted to change a house into a restaurant. So that would be a new use of the land. So that's an example of a material change of use. Okay, so in summary, the concept of development and its components, such as use, material change of use, reconfiguration, reconfiguring a lot, op works, they're critical to understand to work in the planning and development sector in Queensland, and you really need to understand these concepts really off the top of your head, at least in general terms, to work in the DA system and read a planning scheme and other things. So the broad definition of development, though, is simply a, a wide umbrella under which virtually any activity affecting land can be regulated. To know whether approval is required for development, you need to consider whether it is uh, or whether it triggers any approval requirements at a state or local government level. So that's the second step in these three preliminary questions. You have to work out what category of development it is. And broadly, there's three categories under the new Act. There's accepted development, accessible development, and prohibited development. And accessible development has two important categories, uh, subcategories, code and impact assessment. So for accepted development, you don't need government approval. For accessible development, you do need government approval. And for prohibited development, you can't do it, you can't even apply. So within the subcategories of accessible development, code assessment and impact assessment, the major difference is something that's code accessible doesn't need to be publicly notified. 
and can't be appealed by a submitter to the Planning and Environment Court, whereas impact assessment needs to be publicly notified and can be appealed by a submitter to the Planning and Environment Court. Now to find out which category the development you're considering falls into, first you need to check the planning regulations for state level triggers. And as an example, if you wanted to demolish a building that was on the Queensland Heritage Register, that would trigger accessible development at a state level. You find that trigger in Schedule 10 of the regulations. Now, you also need to check for relevant local level triggers under the relevant local government planning scheme. So you, you find the local government for the land that you're considering. And as an example, uh, this is uh, the Southern Downs Regional Council's uh, website or a screen grab of it. And its local government planning scheme is the Southern Downs planning scheme from 2012. So you can check that planning scheme, you can download it. And as an example, if you wanted to demolish a uh, heritage building in that local government area, it would be uh, accepted development if it wasn't on the local heritage uh, list or local uh, listed as a local heritage place so you could simply you can demolish any building in Southern Downs Regional Council uh, area as long as it's not on a local heritage place if it is a local heritage place then it is accessible development and it's impact accessible so that's just an, a brief example of levels of assessment under a local government planning scheme you actually need to check the regulations and the relevant planning scheme, unless you're already familiar with them, to know whether a proposal for a particular site is code or impact accessible. And the triggers from, for accessible development vary from place to place. So the third question you have is, well, what levels of government are involved in the assessment process? And basically the rule is, if there's any accessible development under a planning scheme, the local government will be the assessment manager. And that's normally the case. And if they are, and there's a state level trigger, then the state government is a referral agency uh, under the state assessment and referral agency framework. That's an online portal that allows uh, you to make a referral or to uh, apply to the state government for assessment. So SARA is the most common referral agency. Okay, once you've answered all of those preliminary questions, you can work out whether you need to make an application, and if so, what parts of the DA process apply. So looking at that flowchart, pre-application is, uh, it's often really useful to kind of have a meeting with uh, the local government and the state government before you lodge an application, and they can give you feedback on what they think of it, uh, any bits that they need more information on, that can be really useful. So pre-application or pre-lodgement meetings, they're not mandatory, but often really useful. Then if you're putting in an application, you've got the application part. Uh, if, and, and, and there's things in that like filling out the relevant forms, supporting reports, uh, owner's consent, those, those sorts of things. Depending on what's involved in the application, you might trigger an information request. So if the government needs more information about something, they can ask you. If there is a referral agency, then it's a referral part. If something is impact accessible, there's public notification, and then all of those things come together for the final decision. And potentially, after the decision, either the applicant can appeal, or if it's impact accessible, submitters can appeal to the Planning and Environment Court. But only about 5% of applications go on appeal, so it's relatively rare. Most applications end at the decision part. Now, there's a lot more detail in the development assessment rules, so you can find them online. The final thing I just wanted to touch on is what's the test for decisions. Uh, you can look at sections 45 and 60 of the Planning Act for that. And a useful reference is the, the decision, uh, 20, 2019 decision in Ashvan Investments and Brisbane City Council, a decision of Judge Williamson. So you can, uh, you can find that um, on the um, court's website and I've given you the link. So the basic rule though, uh, just to, to boil it down, and it's Ashvan gives you a lot more detail, but the basic rule for the tests for approvals is if a proposed development is consistent with the planning scheme and other planning layers, it's likely to be approved. But if it's not consistent, 
it's likely to be refused unless there are sufficient relevant matters to justify approval. So ultimately, the greater the inconsistency, the harder it is to get approval. Now, if you want more information about the DA system, uh, there's a 90 minute uh, lecture about it, going into a lot more detail and giving a, basically a work example of uh, development out at Warwick for demolition of a heritage building. So that's available as lecture four of a workshop available at the link there. So envlaw.com.au forward slash edo underscore workshop.